Our first presenter this morning, Nate Nalvin, has over 33 years of national security system design, manufacturing, management, and related system development and deployment experience. Nate is currently the Corporate Director of Engineering Systems and Strategy, in addition to, being the le uh, in addition to leading the Corporate Collaborative Engineering Environment Corporate Initiatives for Northrop Grumman. Please welcome Nate Nalvin. At Northrop Grumman, innovation isn't just an idea. It's a way of life. We are designing unmanned aircraft that can patrol the ground and sea from 12 miles above. We are developing solutions that prevent cyber threats from becoming cyber attacks. We are getting up close and personal with distant galaxies. We are discovering trends to stay ahead of disease outbreaks. We are making giant breakthroughs in technology at microscopic sizes. We are taking technological advancement to a higher level. We are proving that as a company of innovators, we can bring the next generation of technology to life. The value of performance, Northrop Grumman. Well, good morning, and uh, thank you for having me this morning, and you're all getting up this uh, morning after last night's uh, shindig. Um, one, it's a real honor to be here representing both my corporation and also um, speaking about one of our uh, strategic partners, E-Cube, and of course, uh, Siemens. And uh, as in my introduction, I'm Nate Nalvin, and uh, I'll be spending the next two hours going over some of our strategic initiatives with you. Okay? Okay, um, who is Northrop Grumman? We're a leader in global security. We have uh, $23.5 billion in sales in 2015, and 35, uh, 36 billion in backlog. And we're really focusing on some uh, differentiators of our corporation, which is autonomous systems, systems that can think, systems that can reject our power anywhere on the planet, cyber warfare, C4, ISR, logistics, and strike capability. Okay, our focus is on performance, and, and we are a company of peace. And what, what our mission is, our mission is to make sure that our adversaries understand that we can project that power anywhere on the planet. And then we also turn our focus on advancing human discovery, having the ability to um, send um, satellites and spaceships out to um, far reaches in the galaxy and the universe and be able to discover life. So um, we're supposed, our, again, our vision most trusted provider of systems, technologies, and again, secure, um, ensure the security of our nation and its allies. Okay, um, so where do we start from? So for today, I'm, I'm really taking us on a little bit of a journey, and the journey is talking about implementing our PDM, turning into PLM, turning digital twin, digital thread, and um, how did we get there? So in the 80s, we realized that we have to look at a next generation PDM system. Right? We wanted to look at COTS tools, and we selected this tool called Metaphase. Right? And we developed, um, it was a great toolbox, and we developed a, a customization layer that's now known as the AND module. In the 90s, we said we have to take that to another level. And um, we, we, we embarked upon a PLM strategic initiative, and that was where we chose Team Center Enterprise at this point as our main platform for PLM across the corporation and uh, started commonizing on that thread, really in the engineering space, but wanting to expand that to manufacturing and logistics, and global supply chain. Um, what we found very rapidly was Metaphase and Team Center was a great tool to put information in, but we couldn't get anything out. When um, we put together report requirements, we found that um, it was great you know, that they would be able to, the IT organization can develop these reports, but the moment we got the report, we wanted to change it. And we had to wait six months for a change. So that's, that, that, that realized, that was a very big finding for us that we had to have a way of getting information out. And it's not advancing. Okay, so the data's in the system, but you're unable to get it out. Okay, um, so in, uh, in 2004, we, um, we first um, got exposure to this tool called eCube, 
UBI who is with our, one of our favorite competitor mates, Lockheed Martin, on the F-35 program. And um, really intrigued by this tool. Actually, at PLM World, we actually had meetings with Dinesh and Sanjeev and um, talked about what our issues and concerns were and said, how can we utilize your tool to get us the information that we're really desiring? So we did evaluations. We looked at not only EQ, but some other solutions to extract information at our team center. And then we actually selected EQ as our strategic partner for um, around the PDM reporting space. Because we also had PI, which was integrating to many of our other systems. And since that point, we have been using EQBI to extract all kinds of information. And we'll talk about some in particular, which is thinking out of the box. And that's something that I really invite all of you to do is you know, keep challenging. You know, we're never comfortable with what we are or what we do. We really have to keep challenging it. And even though we um, went out and procured this tool to do these specific things, which is old hat to, to them, it's you know, getting metric reports, getting change authority reports, drawing trees, um, EO reports, quality reports, you know, the things that we're all accustomed to. And it's really nice that we can get them and we can have bar charts and graphs and GAN charts and you know, get that information out in very colorful and easy to use methods. But that isn't really where the value is. The value is challenging and seeing what else can you do, right? What else can you do with these types of tools? And one was um, a consolidated release package. So um, back when I was an engineer years and years and years ago, um, I used to go to the drawing counter and get the microfilm cards print out 50 sheets, which was a drawing package, and go through it and see the, um, the engineering orders, the, the, the drawing uh, itself, the bill of materials, um, all the information that I needed for me to do my engineering. And that was such a nice way of getting data. I throw out lots of things, killing all the trees on the planet. But it was so easy and convenient. Inside a team center, all the data is there, but as you can see with the blue circles, it's distributed across two systems, many places, lots of navigation. So we challenged eCube to build us a report that would go out and search for all this data, build one PDF file that contained the 2D and 3D artifacts. And that was a tremendous success, saving us countless hours. Another, another thing that we looked at was a CAD extractor. Supplying data to our, um, to our supply chain. How do we get all that data, package it, so we can send it to the supplier? So again, data is spread all over our data model. We, um, we present the uh, user with a log on screen. They log on. They, um, they are verified that they have the permissions they need. The data is extracted from the system, zipped up, and put onto their desktop without us getting involved. Again, saving countless hours. So within our, within our life cycle of product development, from the very beginning of the design through the release package, eCube is part of that ecosystem. It generates change notice reports. It generates the parts list, the sheet one report, the consolidated bill of materials, consolidated PDF report. <clears throat> so we have some current challenges. So that was great. We move on. What else, what else do we need? So today, we're, we're focusing on business efficiency. How can we do more with less? How can we make our, our engineering team, our manufacturing team more effective utilizing the data that's in this system? We need to simplify it because as, as powerful as the tool is, we still get pushed back. Very hard to use, lots of clicks, lots of screens. I know Active Workspace is taking us that way. We're not there yet, so we're looking at how we can um, improve that. Okay, um, migration from Team Center Enterprise to Team Center Unified, taking it to that next step. How do we get the data there? Our new programs are easy, but our legacy data is killing us. So we're looking at eCube and with their MI, MI capabilities to help us migrate in a synchronous fashion. And what I mean by synchronous fashion, for those of you who aren't aware of it, some of our last um, migration activities on the E2 program, for instance, we, we sat there, we migrated data, it was a five-year effort, and we had to actually bring the program down for five weeks while we were moving data. We can no longer afford that. We have to be able to migrate the data, be able to validate it, be sure that all the data is there and working, and over a weekend turn that program on on the new tools. <clears throat> we also want to, and you saw Digital Lake, you saw um, Digital Twin, Digital Thread, we need to integrate not just Team Center, but our big rock tools, SAP, MES, ALM, key legacy systems, and integrate that. And again, we're looking towards uh, EQ to put that, that bus to allow us to take the information from these different systems and put them together. Okay, um, this is um, 
My other role, and I put my other hat on, is around um, the collaboration tool. We built the dashboard for our engineers. In this case, in the uh, large screen, the, um, the engineer just selected a tile saying that he has some work to do in Team Center. He can do an action in here and actually check out. I, um, not check out, he can uh, claim an assignment, release, an, uh, um, approve a release, reject, reassign assignment. He can look at the 3D artifacts, he can comment on it, and he can actually perform the execution right from the web page without actually going back. On the uh, screens on the right, you'll see um, metric charts. So at a, at a visual, he sees that he's late, on time, can act on those. So we're talking about actionable uh, intelligence, being able to get the information you need and act on it. And again, all the interfaces here are done with eCube Technologic and going right into our team center environments. OK? We spoke a little bit about our digital backbone. In order to us to uh, rationalize tool, I'm responsible for approximately 1,600 different tools in the environment and I'm trying to get that number down. And the only way to really do that is to have a digital backbone, is to be able to take data from one system, bring it to another, migrate the data, validate the data, and then turn off the legacy tool. And also keeping the big rock systems in place. So interfaces used for the bulk loads, um, complex interfaces are underway for Team Center, SAP, MES, we have a table uh, a few rows back who's doing our manufacturing information right now. Again, a tremendous capability that's going to leapfrog us forward. So what were some of the strengths and what did we learn over the last um, 12 years of working with them? So one, having a single Team Center integrated platform, the power to unleash that information is tremendous. The ease of development and support. So um, being able to make those changes independently of a team center rollout or a team center release. And having no last, um, no, ha having no, no development requirements for each upgrade and have a very loose coupler so I can take these pieces and place it into the environment and upgrade it without having actually to upgrade the code and the interfaces with every release. We had, uh, we had another initiative that we, um, we had several years back in which we built a great system made up of like 30 parts and we couldn't touch it because if we touched it, we would break the whole thing. So now we have an environment that we have all of these pieces we can plug and play because of this data bus architecture. Right, the synchronization, having the ability to upgrade and migrate people without actually taking blackout periods and taking them offline. Having a library of connectors that uh, allow us to get to all of our partner tools and uh, virtualization which gives us our growth. So, so those are really the things that we found really make this a, a great strategic partner. And you know, thriving through connections, you know, and actually this conference to get back to, uh, to the thread yesterday, you know, that w none of this would have happened if it wasn't for the connections we made at PLM World, the connections we make here, and taking those with you. So I am a true believer. So on exiting, and I'm 26 seconds in, um, just uh, getting ready Remember for the next, when the big, next thing. big thing. Really was big. Really, truly, epically big. So big, the world would literally stop just to get a glimpse of it. Boys and girls would dream endlessly about it. And history books all had to be rewritten for it. Makes the latest smartphone, search engines, and robot cars seem downright tiny in comparison, doesn't it? Well, most of the next big things we all know and love came from one place. America's aerospace industry. In fact, American aerospace was the birthplace of innovation. Real innovation. And you know what? It still is. Today, we're inventing the next big thing in unmanned vehicles. The next big thing in space telescopes. The next big thing in microscopically small things. And the next big thing of stuff we're not even allowed to talk about. This is what we do. Because when you break free of the bureaucratic shackles, keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible, and radically advance human discovery, you're able to do something big, something really, truly, epically big. Build the next big thing.
of next big things. Well, I'd like to thank you and have a great rest of the conference.